<coughs> My name is Lady Nance Finch, Louis Finch. M A D I E B W S E. Of our county, if I And where do you live? I live at 1128 Fillmore Street here in Atlanta. Okay. And where were you born? Where was I born? Mm -hmm. I was born in Enterprise, Alabama. Okay. Talk about your parents' views on education. First of all, who are your parents? My father's. James Henry Nance, James Evan Nance, and my mother's name is Gilly Nance. Okay. And where were they born? <coughs> you know, I really don't know. Okay. Growing up as a uh, child in your home, what were your parents' views on education? Both of them had a strong belief in education. My father had sent all of his children to college except one, and that one did not want to go. And my mother believed in education too. During our day in school, she was working with the school. What school did she work with? The Coffee County Training School for the team. What did they tell you and your sisters and brothers about education? My mother didn't talk about education too much. My dad did because he wanted all his children to be educated. And all of them to go to college and be the first to do it from college. Because he really didn't know what to do and he couldn't know any man to say anything. So he wanted to be independent ladies. Why else were they such strong believers in education? I guess because the entire community where we live, most of them always sent their children to school, or the children were not able to go to college. A few of them in the neighborhood went to college. <coughs> but all the children in the neighborhood and in the community went to school. We had to give them a high school education. What were your uh, memories uh, of the fire in 1938 that destroyed the original building of the Coffee County Training School? You know, I was so young, I don't really, really remember that. I used to know someone coming to tell my father the school was burning. And so late at night, we were not allowed to go out, and we did see the fire that was burning. But the day after the fire, we went down and saw the school that completely burned down. And my dad was really, and several men in the neighborhood <coughs> were really interested in why the fire started. They, my father was a, a, uh, on the trustee board for the school system. And so that was it, and several of the men in the neighborhood, at least two or three of the men in the neighborhood, was on the school board. So they were very interested in the first church, you want to go to school, what was going to happen. They were super what to do because they did not want to let you do it. They wanted the school to be built back, and they didn't want the church to have to go to another city for school. How old were you in 1938? Yeah, you know, I was born in 1925, and you figured that out. About 12, 13? Yeah, so. Okay. So you, never, you weren't outside because it happened at night and you were in bed? Yeah, oh yeah, hell yeah. I guess late at night, or it, I don't know, she was late at night, so I knew we were, we were in bed. <coughs> Now tell me about your grandparents. Well, I really don't know anything about them, no more than what I have heard. 
because my grandparents had the seeds when I was born. I think, I guess I'm sure they would, because I never saw them. Did your parents ever talk about their views on education? Who, my parents or my grandparents? Did your parents ever talk about their parents' views on education? No. Okay. And I ran back in that day to went to talk to my sister to, to make sure they had a chance to go to school in that day. None of the informants and the I don't know if they live near a school. I don't know really don't know where they live, so I don't know whether they live near a school or not, but it's really put up on the school. Was that a big thing with education back then, being near a school? And for my generation, I think it was because it, the, the community the schools in our neighborhood, and I lived across the street from the school after the school burned. I lived down the street from the school when the school burned. But after school was I lived across the street from the school. So, talk about the school after the fire. Do you remember when? Your father sold the land for the school to be rebuilt? No, really, my, my father, at least my mother, my father and my mother, they didn't sell the school the land. They gave the school the land because they didn't want the school to be built in another city, which was in Elba, Alabama. <coughs> How far was Elba? And, oh, I think my land is about $16 an enterprise. So therefore, they gave them land to build a house, the school. But the superintendent and the school board did promise my mother that when they were able, they would pay her some money for the land. And uh, I don't really know how much money they had because land was very cheap back in that day. Because I don't know, know my mother thought to sell land for forty dollars an acre. I don't really know how much money the school board had. But they gave this land away for free. They, they gave it to them for free. Yeah. Do you know if they ever got any money for the land? I, I, I think after, after my mother my father passed, I don't know. But I think I heard my father say they gave him some money. They didn't give him the value of the land, <coughs> but they gave him some money. <coughs> and they made a year. So did you attend this school? The new school? Yes. yes. That's where I attended. I graduated from this school, Coffee County Training School. For what years were you there? I graduated when I graduated. I graduated in 1942. So tell me, tell me your memories. What are some of your fondest memories about going to Coffee County Training School? I know I had some very good caring teachers. And you know what we had? One teacher, we did exchange classes this journey, you know. <coughs> we had one home, each, each, each grade had one home with the teacher. And most of the teachers lived in the neighborhood with some neighbor's house. We had a teacher to live in our home, <coughs> in our house, but not my teacher, I had. <coughs> so your teachers lived with you at some yeah, point? They lived in, they lived in, um, in various neighbors' homes. What was the one thing that you remember most about being in school at, at the Coffee County Training School? Well, you know, I guess. <laughs> when the teachers were very strict, I, I don't think they were very strict. But you had to do your lesson, we had to do homework because we had to do homework. But we studied together, we would go from one person's home to the other to study at night, I would say. And we had a study hour. We had a study hour. I remember when I was in the 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, we could not be outside until after 8 o'clock because we had to study until 
But every time the family sings, so I might have to eat dinner. <clears throat> Until 8 o'clock, it is 8 o'clock at night, at least that's when we can go outside. That's when we go outside and play in the summertime before we go for that dog. And in the wintertime, we didn't do too much going outside and play because we were doing homework. But we got a chance to play about the school, which is very different than what it is now, but we had play time at school. We had re um, recess. We had physical education where you could go outside and play. Of course, not black schools are not where they have done with PE. I'm sure they get a chance to go outside. I, I, I don't even think they even have a recess now. They want to see not that no long. Not, I really not been here. <coughs> you talked a lot about 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, but do you remember some of the earlier years? When I was in the, uh, I think I was in the 6th grade. I believe I leave be in the fifth grade or sixth grade in the school party. <coughs> and my father sent my older brother and myself to the city to a school called Darling School. That's, that was the principal school there. And he had an independent school. And uh, we walked from the community I lived in, which was called Coppinsville, to the city which I think was old, maybe about three or four miles. And I just loved it because I always wanted, I hated going to walk, I hated that live across the street from the school. It was too close. I wanted to walk to school like the other children. So for, for at least one year, I got a chance to walk to school. Me and my old brother. Talk about the school before it burned. What was it like? Well, the structure of the building was like two, it was either two or three stories. And then all the grade was taught in that same building. I remember people downstairs on the lower floor. <coughs> and uh, on the upper floor, the really top floor was, I mean, the black level from 12th grade students. Because I, I remember, yeah, the 12th grade students on that floor. Because I remember that my old brother was one of the last graduates from high school out of that building. And the Home Economics Club had a dinner for the seniors. And I got a chance to go with my brother to that dinner. And it was on the, it went upstairs on the last floor in that home economics room. Talk about <clears throat> the role of school played in the community, aside from being a place that, that students were educated at, what other role did Coffee County Training School play in the community? You know, I, I remember they always had a, good, a, a big PTA. Well, they didn't call it PTV and they called it a uh, parent organization. The parent would go and discuss the problems of school and whatnot. And, and the parent would always have some kind of activity, at least once a year in the summertime for all the students. And they had something like a picnic with barbecue and hot dogs and whatnot. And, and one thing about the school, you did not, they didn't have playground equipment. You know, you go outside and play red balls and bats and basketballs and things. I think I don't even I really don't even know a basketball goal. I'm sure it did have for the lot of children because I was young I couldn't play anyway. But they always kept a lot of activities for the children to do. So if there were no playgrounds, what did you do for recess? Oh you put that and have a play you, you, know, you can get a ball you just go outside and play. You know, it's different from what it is. Now children don't know how to play. You have a, a, a large group of children. Let's say three, four, and five. It's 600 children out on the ground at one time. And everybody be playing. And there will be no fighting either. Everybody be playing with each other. Sometimes uh, <coughs> the school has some, some balls and bats and you play ball. 
And as I said, I, they, they probably had a basketball goal, but I don't remember that anymore. But I do remember the school had a, a band. And this one man that I knew was uh, the head of the band. And most of the time they would practice doing recess time with the larger boys and girls. And we'd get out of the sky and we'd dance about the music that they would play. But do you remember any of your teachers' names or any of the principals' names? Mm, I know my. <coughs> I, I remember and I have seen really the first principal of the school was uh, my mother's cub, first cub, his name was Elijah Tindall. And then I remember the man who was the principal when, when the school burned, his name was S.T. Wilson. And we had a principal named Mr. Robinson. He came from another city. And by this time, my daddy had <coughs> built a house on our property that he could rent to the principals so they would have some place to stay. And two, three, two of the principals I know lived in this house, one by the name of Mr. Robinson, and, and <coughs> the principal I had when I finished high school, A.R. Stickney, and his wife. And were all these people African American? Yes, I was all African. Was your father an educator himself, or, you know, was he just a farmer who just believed no, in education? My father, my father was a farmer, and I think he said he, he got to the fifth grade. But my father was the best mathematician I'd ever seen in my life. Because he can, he, he can, out, he can outbeat you counting money. If you put his figures on paper while you trying to figure it out on a piece of paper, he could figure it out in his head. So he was an excellent mathematician, but he only got to the field grade. Mm -hmm. And he could, and he was a good reader. And I think that back in that day, children, children was taught how to read more than they are taught how to read now. Mm -hmm. I remember my days coming on. We used to have, have um, like spelling lists. Maybe you start off with 20 words a week, and then they, we had going up to size 50 words. And the higher grades had one of the highest 100 words. And, you, and I, I remember every week having spelling. Now, at what point did Coffee County Training School become historical, if at all? Did it become an, a, an historical landmark? Did it become an historical landmark at all? You know what? I, 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 I guess like, like a little guy from school, they've done that sense because they used to go back to where the school burned. I would think for seven years they could go back and, and, and meet on that ground and have a picnic. When did the school officially close? The Coffee County Train too? Yes. I, I don't know because I wasn't there when they closed. Because they uh, they closed the building and moved it to the city. Because the Coffee County Training School is still standing, someone has bought it for a church. Have and you been to I that have, church? Since I have lived in here, I have gone back there. And we had a family union on that school ground at Coffee County Training School. But they moved, and then when they moved to town, it became the Coffee County High School, CCTS. But they combined it with the city. But it's still called the other kind of training school, uh, uh, El uh, Dash Enterprise City School, that's where it was. So we didn't include that, in some way they include the city name in there. But it still carries its own name. Mm -hmm. And it still carries its own name today. Because they have uh, school reunions every two years. At the, not 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 at, at not at the uh, Coffee County Train School where they closed it, but at the, the CCTS AJS High School, City Enterprise High School. Mm -hmm. You spoke about 
Elijah Tindall being one of your um, administrators. Do you know? Um, do you know if he went to Howard University? No. Where did he? He's from Tuskegee. Okay. Tuskegee Institute. Did he return to Enterprise? Really, he never, he never left. You know, because he was when he was going to. I, I really don't know anything about his high school education. Because I have always known him. He was, he was, he was when I met him, he was a grown man. And he was in, in, in Enterprise then. So now his younger days coming up, how he, how he operated, I don't know. Were most of the educators educated at the Coffee County Training School? Did most of them go to most college? Yes. Yeah, most of the teachers. Yes. Yeah, most of the teachers were educated people. Okay. You know, I've never known it. I've never known anybody who like just finished high school and talked to them. No. When your father donated this land to the school board, you know, do you think he envisioned that it would go as far as it did? You know, what what was going on in his mind then? Not, it, his sole purpose was to keep the school moving to another city. Now, how much it was going to grow, I don't know. You know, I don't know his thoughts on that. But I know the main. The main thought at that time, he and um, other people in the community, uh, when the said school to move to move out of the city, I leave enterprise, and now I want to help. But and that, the the property where the school built was too small to build a bigger school, and they need a bigger school because of the the. But when the school was rebuilt, it wasn't a two-story house. It was just a one-story house. Just a big, long, L-shaped. Was it L-shaped? Not any kind of L-shaped. But I mean, I, I know it was, it was not. It was on one floor. You retired here in Gary as um, an educator. Did your humble beginnings as a student in the Coffee County Training School inspire you to become an educator? You know what? I don't, it might have did. Because really, I didn't even want to go to college, so I was being educated. <laughs> Back in that day, uh, that's, everybody was talking about getting married. I was going to get married after I finished high school. But you know, because my father, I had, I had to go to college, which was a good thing. But I never really wanted to teach, teach children. I wanted to be a, um, a PE teacher. But I ended up not doing that. I ended up majoring in home, ex in home, ex home economics and minor in economics. Until I came to Gary, and then when I came to Gary, I changed my position because I only taught high school people in Alabama. When I come, came in here and I had no desire to teach high school people. And I did not teach for five years after I came here. So there was a big shortage of teachers here. And because of the maiden name, Dr. Carrie Dawson insisted that I teach. And I did teach for one year, one summer, on the basis that I would be somebody, a teacher's aide and not to be a teacher. Because I didn't want nobody to know I was a teacher. And then in September, I finally accepted a position in, in my early learning preschool at the, in the school system as an early learning teacher, as a preschool teacher. Are there any final thoughts that you have about the Coffee County Training School? No, no more than that. I'm so glad that it's still alive. <coughs> um, they have big class reunions every two years. And two years ago, I was, I, I didn't go to the, I, I, at one point in my earlier days coming to Gary, I was back to the class reunion. And uh, my son still goes. And they have big class, big class reunion now. They, we have one this year. I'm June the 15th and 16th. 
Lane was always at the school in the community. And did your children go to the school as well? My children mm -hmm. went to where? To Coffee County Training no. School? The, my children, oh yeah, been in jail and then they went for a while. Been in jail for a while and then they went for a while and then they Framework School in here. What was it like uh, being on the other other side of Coffee County Training School as a parent instead of a student? You know what? We well, you know it's always different when you're a parent. Because when I was a student, you know, I did my own thing. And then when I became a parent, I said, see, to, to my children, went to school and they got they had their needs. And they got their lessons. It's, all, it's, 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 a, it's a world of difference than being a student and being a parent. Because you have more responsibility as a parent. You, know, you don't have any responsibilities when you're children. And they, you need to have some, but you know, most children, they don't think they have no responsibility. We had chores to do higher. Like take out the trash, get clean, keep the house clean, wash. Help them put the most wash, and, and cook. So I'm going to ask the obvious question, and what were students being trained to do at the Coffee County Training School? Well, see, we, <coughs> we had, we had uh, a, a large homeless lunch program, and then we had a large agriculture program. We had agriculture to te teachers who taught boys how to make things, you know, make different cabinets. Uh, they didn't teach them too much about farming, although they did. The school always, the, the agriculture teachers would always have a, big, a large garden. But they were also taught how to build things, build a house, build toys. And the girls always taught her, and they went to know how to cook and sew. In addition to your reading math and English. Yeah, and then you have to have English and math and you had you had to go. And science, you had you would talk about the home economics class and how to cook and how to sew. So going into home economics in your adulthood, the Coffee County Training School had some impact on your future. Is that correct? You know what? I, probably so. But to where I went interested in home economics when I went to college, I was interested in going to learn how to be a PE teacher. Why PE? I got there, and most of my friends was going to perform the home economics, so I just went to learn the home economics. Then when I started teaching, that's what I taught. Was your father around during the inception of Coffee County Training School? After the video back? No, the first time. The first time? I don't I really don't know. So he just sort of came aboard after the fire? No. His girl was going to school there. Okay. Because my oldest brother, who was the first graduate, was one of the last graduates of the school when the school burned. And see, we, we all were going to the school. At least, you know, the, the ones that were born now. I only had, I think I had two, two, two brothers, three, or three of us at that time. The rest of us were born after the after that, at the school after So your father, he, he didn't necessarily start Coffee, Coffee County Training School, but he definitely was integral and <coughs> integral in making no, sure that it that continued. It was already, it was already, I mean, who started, I really don't know. And I guess uh, with the, with the county, in the city, they, it was probably started by them. We we'll see <clears throat> during that during that time, it was a parent in the neighborhood that select the school board, the trustees, the school board. I said the school board was selected, and most of it was always the parents in the school who was selected for the school board. And since back in that day, with the trustees. They saw they took care of everything, took care of the buses, 
Once a year, my father and other trustees members have to go over to Georgia and get new buses for the school. They took it. They took it a light and gas. They were supposed to keep it a nice and a not bright and gas, keeping it a light and whatever kind of heat they had during that day. So was your father ever on the school board or was he ever a trustee? And that's what I say, he was trustee. Do you remember what years? No. Right before I was in, because when I knew anything, he was trustee, because I don't know what he had been So probably in the early 20s? Okay. Well, thank you for your interview. Do you have any final thoughts at all? Um, nice talking with you.